Today on Q&J, I am sick, but not of Jane Hughes. Q and J. Hey everyone, welcome back to Q and J. As always, my name is J, and it is time to J some Qs. Now, I've read through all of the comments of last week. Oh, there were a lot. And the big debate was whether or not, because someone mentioned about the Legion of the Dam combining with the Salamanders, and there seems to be still a lot of debate. Yes. So feel free to continue that debate. But I, I thought, I was under the impression that afterwards I went and read some rules, and I was under the impression that Legion of the Dam could not take advantage of the chapter tactics of the salamanders, but maybe I'm wrong. So, I'm wrong on many occasions. But let's continue. So, Yolo Drag, let off the con the, uh, just the chatter, you know, the comments. With Alas, Legion of the Damned can't receive bonuses from chapter tactics so that the salamanders combo is impossible. Why? Thank you very much for your comment, Yolo Drag. And uh, several people seem to to agree with you, while a couple disagreed. So my soul patch is getting very long, I noticed. Okay, that's a different story. Y20K90 says, Dear Jay, I find myself in a bind. That's not good. Binds are not good. For I am a Tyranid collector. Cool. And I have a few units of Space Marines, Dark Angels, and Eldar. That's good. I have no one nearby with which to, I can play. So I am stuck just collecting and painting. Mm -hmm. I know you feel there. Right now, I'm stuck with a lot of Tyranids to paint. I'm okay with painting all my monster creatures I have, but every time I look at the Gaunts and other similar swarm units, I cringe and lose interest in painting the things. Any suggestions on what to do with these armies? By the way, have you seen the Forge World new Nid unit, the Dimiricon and its rules? Yes. It looks like a combination of a Carnifex and Heraspex and Lictor. It looks nasty, but amazing. Yes, I'm probably going to be ordering one from Forge World in the near future. It looks pretty cool. And it's pretty tall. I wanted to buy it while I was at Gen Con. I just didn't have the money, unfortunately, on me to buy it. So, um, with your Tyranids and your Swarms. Now, here's what I recommend if you don't... Alright, because you're a painter, as you mentioned. So, you typically paint to an above, probably, tabletop standard. The key is when you're painting Swarms, if you really don't want to paint them, it's better to paint them to a lower standard than to not paint them at all. So, here's what I recommend doing. Typically, when you're painting a Swarm army, and you don't want to spend a whole lot of time painting them, um, is use colored primers base coats and dips saves you a lot of time now I, I I've actually used you know colored primers base coats and dips on some of my armies my dark angels I need to paint them up in like a day and a half so all my tactical Marines were painted using you know uh, just I colored prime them uh, using uh, army painter or primers and then I you know do the base colors over you know what you want to do and then use a dip the appropriate dip um, and that will save you a whole lot of time when painting models. So what typically I would do for Tyranids is, if you're painting like a Gaunt or a Hormagaunt, is you paint either the carapace color using the, the, the primer or the body color. It's easier if you do the body color typically because with, with the Tyranids it's just easier to paint the carapaces on their own. So if you have like a, I don't know, whatever combination, you have the, paint the body type using a colored primer and then go, or whichever one's lighter, essentially is a great way to go with that too. So you paint one using a colored primer, base coat the other one, and then dip it, which will fill in all those recesses, give it a good shine. Then you hit it afterwards with a you know satin or matte varnish, depending on the, the overall look you want. And that will save you a whole lot of time, for sure. Uh, I know it doesn't come to the same exact, um, the same exact standard, but it will get them done, and it will make them look awesome. You know, for the amount of time you spend on them, you know, you can paint the eyes, the teeth, and then just, you know, whatever secondary colors you want, and then dip them, and they actually turn out pretty nicely. I use dips from Army Painter as well. So, yes, so thank you very much for your comment, and I hope that answers your question. But as I said, it's better to paint to a slightly lower standard than not have them painted at all, for sure. And... Ooh, there were a lot of comments. So, thank, uh, Command the Dark Guard says, thanks Jay, good advice. Seven warp charge point bonus seems like a good idea to have. I didn't think about the astropath because it only rolls on telekinesis, but for a cheap one plus dice, exactly. It, it only goes on telekinesis, but it's an extra dice for negating and for doing psychic powers. Yeah, it could be worth it. Calling has been removed, so no need to answer Jay. 
Oh, okay. And there was a question as well. I don't know what the question was. Um, but uh, apparently it's about... The, there were a bunch of other comments. So thank you to all the people out there. Uh, Command the Dark Guard, Timonius, Martin Addy, and uh, Black Tom all answered those things. So very much. Thank you very much. I love this thing about the Q&Js is that you guys are answering each other's questions as well. Because sometimes... I am not the most perfect expert on certain things, and luckily my viewers, some of them are, and it's really cool how we can just, you know, form a community and help each other out. Mm -hmm. So Jim White says, Jay, if you were going to take a custom, to make a custom board to play 40k on, what theme would it be? Ice. Ice and snow. I always like the winter. Um, maybe it's because I'm Canadian and I'm just used to seeing it. It's not snowing out outside yet, but in Calgary, they've already gotten snow, I believe, and that sucks. But uh, ice themed. I'd go, definitely go winter and uh, winter and ice. I think it'd be really cool to make the entire board like a layer of clear ice and snow around it. It'd be kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yes. So thank you very much for your comment. I'd, I'd definitely go winter themed, Jim White. Juan Rafael Bascope Morales says, Hey Jay, love the channel. I'm Bolivian. That's cool. Bolivia is a cool country. Play Necrons. I was wondering what do you think about a list with many flyers. To be honest, most of the competitive Necron lists are the flyer spam lists, so I definitely see that being a competitive army. And plus, since Necrons have come out, when Necrons first came out in 7th edition, or 6th edition came out, people were really angry because they had such cheap flyers, especially their, um, their transports were very cheap and very efficient, and they kind of broke all the other rules, so people were upset. But since then, certain armies have some ways of dealing with them, so it's, it's a little bit more balanced. Uh, I mean, like three in a fifteen hundred point game. Oh, that's not a lot. That's a very that's a very lower amount of flyers. I've seen fifteen hundred point lists with like nine, so that's not bad at all. Especially if you're taking, um, what are they called again? The goat, not the, uh, the the transport ones, as opposed to the one with the doom weapon. Mm -hmm. You see, the dedicated transport flyer is really good and cheaper than any other transport army. Yeah, exactly. That's it. They're a great choice. Uh, they beam down your guys, and if they explode, I'm pretty sure they don't kill your guys. So it's pretty nice. It's a good option. So it's not taking three. Probably won't lose you any friends. Uh, most competitive armies would have an answer to it, and you're only bringing three. And so, if, especially if you bring the transport ones, they're amazing for the points cost, but they don't have that crazy draw a line gun. So not bad at all. I think that's a good medium. Joel Berger says, do you have an opinion on how to integrate both Chaos Marines and Chaos Demons? Yeah, you, it's pretty hard to bring, you either go demons with, the problem is demons are such a, I find them to be very points costs. You know, especially when designing a list for Chaos and Chaos, I notice a lot of people kind of have a problem with small points games because it's so expensive to combine the two. I love the idea and I love the minis, however, I run out of points very quickly. Exactly, as I mentioned, you know. I'm a huge, I'm not a huge competitive player but would like to hear your thoughts on bringing demons along with my Night Lords. Looking for anywhere from 15 or 18 point range. Thanks. Love the vids. Keep them going. No problem. Thank you very much for your comment and uh, your appreciation, Joel Berger. What I would do is you take... I would take Chaos Space Marines as your primary detachment. And then bring demons that would spawn more demons. Like uh, Pink Horrors. You know, I was going to watch how I say that. But Pink Horrors... Um, they anything that can spawn more demons that can in turn spawn more demons because it kind of bypasses that uh, that points cost thing. So if you bring a, a few of them and you can actually spawn more, you're in great shape and you can bring tons of demons. Um, the, the greater demons, I love. You know, I personally love the great unclean one, but he's pretty expensive. So it's up to you what kind of uh, HQ you want to take. HQ is where the, a lot of the points will be dropped on, and then I'd recommend just bringing some squads of like pink horrors or other things that can spawn more demons. Mm -hmm. Hope that answers your question. But I would definitely stay primary detachment as chaos. Uh, it's easier to bring. You get more models in the end if you bring you know chaos space marines, uh, and then you just ally them with some some demons. So it's, it'd be better. Mm -hmm. Heck of tricks, which says the light the lighting is way cooler. Just put the cam higher up a bit so your head is in the shot. I did that. So you can see my head. It's farther back this time. Thank you very much. And uh, please do a full review of the Dark Eldar Codex as soon as it comes out. I will definitely. I'm going to do a Codex review on every Codex and possibly every supplement from now on. That's my goal. Everything. 
I want to be the one known that you guys can tune in on the Friday of the release or possibly if late Saturday and at super late the Monday, but I would definitely try to have by the Monday, the Friday or the Saturday and you guys can see my codex reviews. That's my goal. And I think Dark Eldar is next, is my guess. Can't wait for it, as, my, as people might pick it up and see how great the army is. It is a great army. Dark Eldar is a great army. Hope you come to Great Britain. We'd love to meet you. Definitely. I would love to meet you too, Hecatrix Witch. Um, Dark Eldar is an awesome army. I love them. I would have collected Dark Eldar, but my friends, when I, uh, when I started 40k back again, it was one of the armies I liked, but my friends liked it too, and it's just one of those situations where you give your friend an army and you do a different army. So, yeah. Sergeant Harker says, so Jay, a couple of questions, quick questions. First one is about a weird thing about a friend of mine plays, and this weird idea he has about unit size. For example, in a Space Marine Codex, he seems to assault squads, he, see, oh, sorry, he sees the assault squads as being able to take three special weapons, specifically. Plasma pistols, he would say that, and take only the five-man squad, not to say points, but out of some weird philosophy about max point efficiency. But I would argue taking ten-man squads for more bodies, shots, and hits with weapons. What are your thoughts about it? So, yes, that's a good question. Um, it de honestly depends on the army. Uh, min squads versus max squads. And the great thing is about max squads is that... Typically, they are more points efficient because you don't have to pay for two sergeants, um, but you don't get two sergeants. But they're you know you still save a, a bit of points, and you can always um, break them into two squads if you want to. So the great thing about max squads of like ten, if you have combat tactics, is uh, or combat squads, is that you can in a kill point game you can keep them as a squad of ten. And in a non-kill point game, you can combat squad them if you want, and it gives you that versatility, versus bringing the five-man squads does not. That's one of the main shortcomings of bringing five-man squads. They're also a relatively easy kill point. So, uh, that's it. So you tend to give up first blood with min squads, I find more commonly than with max squads. Also, what is your opinion on using some models to represent other models? The Mark of Dave? I'm okay with it. For example, I want I want the priests for my garden and army. And there seemed only be two of them, which I'm not a fan of actually, since they seem to have gotten rid of some really good models for them. But I saw the warrior acolyte models in the Inquisition army, and I think this model fits the look of the preachers. And we got the two models. Oh yeah, especially if you're using other Games Workshop models to proxy as Games Workshop models. I see no problem. I don't. I, in most tournaments. Uh, certain tournaments, I know they won't let you proxy non Games Workshop models as Games Workshop models. But I, I see no problem with that at all. You know, we go, you go with the models you love, and you get the arm, the same army you love, so I see nothing wrong with that. The Mark of Dave, you know, it's just the Mark of Dave. Which I'm pretty sure I coined. Huh. But not the Guardsman. I like having three distinct models for it. What's your opinion on this? Yeah, definitely. I grow, I'd say go with it. I, as long as your opponents, and you just explain clearly what each model represents at the beginning of the game, and continue explaining it, just to make sure that it's clarified, you're in great shape. Mm hmm What's your take on the idea? I like it. I like my idea. Uh, Inquisitor Charlie says, I don't have anything against ads if the extra money helps make better videos. And David particularly responded, I don't know if it'll make better videos. It will, send, it won't make better, essentially, I will have better equipment. But it was just is, uh, the ad money, it, what he says is the ad money will allow Jay to potentially work less hours of his job, so he can spend more time on content for the site. However, like MWG, ultimately, for Jay to do this full time and not have to work a second job, he needs to have a solid group of subscribers to the warp his premium pay channel. So thank you very much for your comment, David Bataglia. It really means a lot. And he is basically right. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm slowly, what I'm doing is I'm slowly knocking back my hours in my other job and adjusting more hours towards making videos. And I've never been happier. Every time I adjust more hours towards making videos, I'm a happier person. Last month was my most subscribed month ever, my most viewed month ever. Now there were two codex reviews in there. But um, this month, I'm going to try to make a bunch of battle reports and get my views back up. And uh, unfortunately, some of them might be J versus J. But when we, essentially, my goal is to make a bunch of J versus J battle reports, but work my, my hardest to get opponents. And I'll be making a video shortly about just which days I'm available and trying to get as many opponents as possible. So that way, each week, I can put out as many versus opponent battle reports and maybe one or two 
uh, between my two channels, uh, J versus J Battle Report, just to add more content. I know they're not as fun or as crazy as with an opponent, but I do see them having some value and some entertainment value and some, some knowledge. Because since I have perfect knowledge of both armies, I can play them really well against each other, and I think people might get some good tactics from it. So that's my, my plan. But thank you very much for your comment. Uh, and if you guys want to check out The Warp, feel free. It's uh, my premium channel. If you don't want to check it out, no problem. But if you want to check it out, it'd be awesome. There's almost 100 videos up. I think next week, no, the week after, I'll be crossing the 100 video mark. So that's pretty cool. Undead Pank says, thanks for answering my last question, Jay. No problem. So here's another one for you. I have been playing Space Wolves, and I love using Wolf Scouts, but people say they suck. Even though every time I've used them, they have done fantastically in the new objective missions. That's exactly what I was about to say. Um, the thing is about Wolf Scouts, and Scouts in general, is they are very good in some circumstances and very weak in other circumstances. So a lot of com com competitive players will say, don't put them in your list because they want things in their lists that are always reliable. That being said, what I found Scouts, and this applies to many other armies that have infiltrates, is uh, anything that has scout and infiltrate, um, they are amazing in these Maelstrom of War missions because you can send them at exactly which objectives you want very early on in the game and score very important points. And sometimes they're actually excellent for getting a first blood on your opponent. They're a very good sacrificial unit. You send them at, you know, give them a melta, throw them at an opponent's tank, destroy the tank, and ultimately they'll die pretty quickly afterwards. But they do get you that first blood or, or that alpha strike that it knocks out an important piece of your opponent. Um, so I don't mind them at all. In the Maelstrom War missions, I would take them. Uh, but if you want to just take, what do you think about taking small infiltrating onto objectives far away to score points early? It's a great strategy. If you know you're playing Maelstrom of War missions, it removes that, um, the question of what you'll be doing. So it actually, I'd recommend bringing them. Bring min squads. In that case, that's a great example of min squads. Bring min squads, very minimal upgrades, and that way you can bring a bunch of them and just, you know, three min squads, throw them at the uh, objectives that you want. Or, I don't know if they have combat squad. If you can possibly combat squad them, that'd be cool too. Yeah. So yeah, it's a great idea. If you know you're playing Maelstrom War Missions, nothing wrong with that. It, it's actually a pretty good uh, tactic. Um, but in other missions, I do find that they, they don't, um, they don't do as well. George Reed says, hey Jay, I've started a Chaos Demon Army, which entry in each of the Demon's Codex slots, do you like hate to play against the most? Actually, to be fair, I don't play against Demons. Very few players, um, the only consistent player I ever played with at Mini Wargaming was John. You know, the guy was like, Hello, I'm John. That's my impression of John. But, um... Hello, I'm John. Uh, John was the only one who played them. But the Great Unclean one combined with the... My least favorite of, of all the combinations is the Great Unclean One working together with, um, what's his name? The one with the Zinch. Um, it's good to remember the names of things. Here. Let's look them up. That's my least favorite combination, because that two-up re-rollable save is just nuts. And, yeah, that's all I have to say. You know, uh, what's his name? Not the Great Unclean One. Uh, Lord of Change. Or the Fate Weaver. Fate Weaver. I think it was the Fate Weaver. But uh, the Fate Weaver or Lord of Change, I don't remember which one, combined with the Great Unclean One when they can bounce spells off each other and do things like that. And there's that rule that the Great Unclean One gives. And th those two are just nasty. The Great Unclean One is just nasty to deal with by on its own. Um, but... Yeah, that's pretty nasty. I'm looking to build... I'm, I'm not looking to build a demon farm list. Just something fun and challenging without the cheese. Yeah, a great unclean one. He's pretty nasty, especially when you combine him with the... the I think it's the little Fate Weaver. I think his name's the Fate Weaver. I don't remember. There's two of them that look alike. One's the Fate Weaver, one's the Lord of Change. And um, the, when combined, they're just unstoppable. Um, iteration... Zero. So there's two things I love about demons. Very easy to configure based on what you want to achieve. Yes, they are very easy to configure. And number two, you always get a save, even if they aren't always great. Yeah, because everyone gets an involve. Advance, sorry for misspelling. No problem. On configurations, you can set up to be close combat power, uh, close combat power, corn, survival, Nurgle, Agile, Slanesh, Psychics, Zinch, uh, or Zinch. 
Building a mix of each can be difficult and will likely prevent specialization and just well round, be well rounded. That's true. Since playing mids, I tended to keep corn out and just use Nurgle and Slanesh. That's where the comp com competition seems to lie sometimes. I like the Nurgle survivability and are great when drawing fire, but they are slow. Slanesh, I've tried to have blocked for approach, but high initiative and better save while in close combat was helpful. Yeah, very cool. My two cents. Very cool stuff. So he has a great comment. Check out Iteration Zero's comment. But uh, great stuff there. And uh, as he said, so my, yeah, you know, uh, spamming pink horrors or the horrors can be really competitive and hilarious for your opponent as well. So that's been fun too. Mm. Christopher Tucker, Corbin, my man, says, Jay, I would like you to pick the color scheme for my Dark Vengeance Chaos set that I was given the other day. Stay awesome. Iron Warriors. Or Night Lords. You choose. Iron Warriors or Night Lords. They're my two favorite Chaos color schemes. So, either one. That'd be awesome. Thank you, let, let me choose. And you stay awesome too, Christopher Tucker. Sprinknot says, Hi Jay, I've started playing 40k a couple years ago with my Tyranid army and have been having a great time with them. Excellent. I recently started Dark Angel army since I wanted some good guys and an army that was more shooty and fast rather than a salty. So you probably want to go like Ravenwing. However, I've had no luck with them so far. I want to run a Deathwing-Ravenwing combo army, which is actually quite hard, I found. Um, but find myself getting shredded without making much of a dent with my bikes who died turn one. Also, I don't know how to deal with flyers. I've read unanimously that Dark Angel flyers underperform. That's true. The uh, Dark Angel Flyer themselves, I wouldn't recommend taking a competitive list. Luckily, we're all okay with Forge World, so I at least have a Mortis Dreadnoughts. So that's great, then you're in good shape there. Um, but I still have to get really lucky on rolls, and they eat up my precious Elite. Got any tips on, to compliment on what's good? I only play with my two buddies who have Imperial Guard, Grey Knights, and Blood Angels. Yeah, so it's, it's pretty hard with Dark Angels. But, um, if, well, if you want to go combine, of course you have to go Azrael for your HQ. And what you have, the two things you have to do is you've got to take the banner of Devastation because it makes plasma guns insane. Plasma guns and even bolters insane around it because it makes them all salvo and that's just crazy sauce right there. So definitely take the banner of Devastation when you're running your bikes. Um, they'll be amazing. Uh, for, you don't have to necessarily take, well you know, because you did mention that you're taking, um, Mortis Dreadnoughts, so you, you don't have any free elite slots, so then you'd have to take Azrael and take, if you want to do a combined, you take uh, the Deathwing as troops. And with troops, give them Cyclone Missile Launchers, and the turn they come in, if they have access to the opponent's flyers, this is one of those situations where it might be advantageous, if you know you're going second, to, um, to go second, and to make them come in second turn. Because then, after the flyers come in, you deep strike in, and that does give you an extra chance with all your shooting, because you are twinlink the turn you come in. And that way, it will help you, it will help, it'll double your chance, essentially, of hitting the flyers and destroying them. Dark Angels have a problem against flyers. The other option is just shooting them to death with your Ravenwing, and because they're salvo, you'll get a lot of shots. But that's basically it with flyers. Um... It's possible. It's, it's just really hard. What I find so far is with Dark Angels is that the combined lists have the biggest problems because you can kind of disassemble them. And it really does, it's easier for target priority, you know, versus just spamming Terminators or spamming, spamming bikes. Um, another great factor is that the, I'm pretty sure the bikes have homing beacons, so you can deep strike right beside them and help them out. So turn one, if you're going first, uh, definitely take the Banner of Devastation, turn one scout, Scout before the game and then move up and just annihilate as much as you can of your opponent with tons of plasma. Tons of plasma. Mm -hmm. Just plasma them. And then drop in your Terminators and, and keep mopping them. That's all I can really recommend. Uh, the thing is with, with um, Dark Angels is they really don't have a lot of options. You know, for troops you're either going tactical, dread, uh, tactical Terminators or Ravenwing, but you want to do a combined so it's Ravenwing and Deathwing. Uh, for elites, you're going to be taking Mortis Dreadnoughts, and for um, for HQs, you're going to have to take Azrael to make both of them troops. For fast attack, 
you're not going to take any fast attack because you're going to take a Ravenwing as troops. And then for heavy, I'd probably recommend taking the other option though is you take a um, Land Raiders. Land Raiders with twin linked, sponsored by Dr. Pepper, um, twin linked glass cannons can be really, can be good against flyers. I know you're hitting on sixes, but the reroll, the twin linking will help. And LAS cannons are essentially your best shot at popping flyers. So that's, you know, high strength, pretty decent AP. So maybe a Land Raider, and you put your, your Deathwing in there, and it'll help keep them alive with Azrael. Or that you couldn't do that. It'd have to be a Land Raider, Crusader, or Redeemer in that case. So just a squad of them. That's another option, is Land Raiders. Because Land Raiders are still pretty powerful, especially in 7th edition, where vehicles are hard to pop, and you give some good weapons to it and it will help destroy your opponents. So I hope that helps. Top Table Gaming says, Hey Jay, I want to start an Imperial Fist Space Marine Army. So do I. You're probably going to beat me to it, but so do I. What units would you recommend? Um, that's a good question. See, I haven't started the army, but uh, drop pods. All right, the thing is, if you're going, if you're not going Sentinels of Terra, you're just going Imperial Fists, right? You said Imperial Iron Fist or Imperial Fist? You said Imperial Fist, yes. So you want Imperial Fists. So with Imperial Fists, um, I really like them because they have twin-linked guns from half range. Isn't that Imperial Fist their special rule? Twin-linked guns from half range. Or is that Sentinels of Terra? Sorry, I'm trying to remember. Um, they're really good with you got to close the distance with Imperial Fists. They're really good from a mid-range, I find. So you got Dreadnought, uh, sorry, Drop Pods are great. Combination, put your guys in Drop Pods, drop them near your army, and then you can your Twin Linked Rule. Um, I think it's Twin Linked from half range. Is there a special rule? Whoa, why don't I just look it up? And knock over other things at the same time. Well, I'm thinking, yeah. Let's look up their special rule. <laughs> So, let's look them up. By the way, I found a good... T somebody sent me some pictures of a Space Marine faction I really liked the other day. Storm Wardens, I believe they're called? They look really cool. I like the look of Storm Wardens. Iron Hands. There's Salamanders. Iron Hands. Come on, where are you? Purifus. White Scars, Purifus. <laughs> what does it say? Oh. Sorry, this is like the most boring thing I've ever done for Q&Js, because I'm just looking through a book. But, uh, yeah, I definitely recommend Drop Pods. Uh, you got to take Lysander. That's the key. Because Lysander uh, is awesome. He's my favorite. He's one of my favorite HQs. He's probably my favorite Space Marine HQ. And Lysander is awesome because he... Here we go. So, remember, oh, sorry, he rolls a hit of one with bolt pistols, bolt guns, storm bolters, half range, totally from half range, is Sentinels of Terra. Um, models in this attachment, Devastator squads and Centurion Devastator squads have the tank hunter special rule. So, Centurions, first of all, I definitely recommend taking Centurions with grav weapons. Space Marines with grav weapons, Centurions especially, are nasty. They are really, really nasty. Um, get to reroll. Ones, so bolt pistols, bolt guns, storm bolters, heavy bolters, commie weapons that are firing as bolters, bolt guns. So, yeah, then essentially that's it. So if you want to take advantage of the chapter tactics, you got to load up tons of bolt guns. And then in that case, if you're not if you're not Sentinels of Terror, you can stay back a little bit and just try to outgun your opponent. But uh, def I, I still like, you know, a bunch of squads in um, in drop pods. Definitely Centurions with grab weapons. Lysander, because he is awesome. Uh, librarian. I'd still take a Librarian in any list because you need some psychic powers. And a Veteran Squad. Veteran Squads are, are even Stern Guards. Yeah, Veterans are really good. So that's what I recommend. Uh, Terminators are okay, but if you want to take, you know, Iron, you know, if you go Terminators, I would say Thunderhammer Storm Shield Terminators combined with Lysander. Um, that's a pretty nasty combination. So, and then uh, again, Land Raiders are just as good as ever. 
uh, if you want to take Land Raiders, I love Land Raiders right now, and Vindicators. Vindicators are really nasty in these games. So, there you go. There's some things to think about. Um, but that's the thing. That's probably what I'm going to do with my Imperial Fists is is take Drop Pods, uh, take Lysander, maybe with some Thunder Hammer Storm Shield Terminators, and just have fun. Throw them at your opponent and see what happens because he is so hard to kill. Mm. Yeah. But thank you very much for your comment. I really hope this uh, answers your question. Imperium Pursuit says, Thanks for answering my question about Legion of the Damned, Vulcan Combo J. Legion of the Damned are part of the Space Marine Codex. You can take up to three squads of them as elite choices, so they can be fielded as a normal part of Vulcan's attachment and use the Forge Father rule. And then Black Tom says Legion of the Damned have the A unlooked for special rule, which means they are they do not benefit from chapter tactics. Salamander's chapter tactics will not benefit them, nor can any characters join their squad. And he said, but Vulcan giving Melt his Mastercraft isn't character isn't chapter tactics, it's his personal special rule. He gives it to the whole detachment, not just as a whole. So he has, yeah, there's still some debate on it. But very good points, back and forth. I'm very curious to see how it works. Because if it does work, it's nasty as heck. But if it doesn't work, it's worth a try. Angus Allen says, Hi Jay, I have started just started Space Wolves and really need some help on deciding what to get. P.S. I really like the Thunderwolf Cavalry. That's exactly what I would recommend. Uh, the more I read the Codex, yeah. Long Fangs are still a viable option, but I'd recommend taking Laz Cannons. Uh, the missiles got nerfed. They're really hard. Laz Cannons are the one-shot kills you need. Because AP3 will not want time pop vehicles anymore. Laz cannons will. Um, other things I recommend. Space Wolves definitely take Thunderwolf Cavalry. Um, and I I personally like it. There's a lot of debate, but I really like that one guy on the wolf. Not Cannon's Wolf Born, the other guy. Um, so I'm trying codices. I have a lot of codices right beside my arm. This is good. What is his name? His name is Harold Deathwolf. I think he's pretty, pretty cool. As far as HQs go, take a bunch of wolf priests. Or Nial, Nijal. Bunch of wolf priests. For troops, I like Grey Hunters. They're a solid choice. You know, they're just a solid Space Marine choice. They're great. Elites, um, definitely. Arjax pretty nasty. Yeah, Arjax pretty nasty. Um, but there's the, all the new. The new um, Space Wolf. Dreadnoughts are really nasty too. Either you can take, you know, Bjorn, but or you can just take the uh, the, the Dreadnoughts are really, really nasty. The Murder Fang with the murdering, murder, murdering. And then for fast attacks, just stack it with Thunderwolf Cavalry and you're in great shape. Heavy supports, long fangs. And Logan Grimnar in his chariot is a solid choice as well. So that's my thoughts on Space Wolves. They are going to be a competitive army. They did get nerfed in a couple ways, and I do understand that, but I still think there's some really good competitive options out there involving the murder fang with the murdering, murdering, murder in a drop pod. And Logan Grimnar in a chariot, and tons of Thunderwolf cavalry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're awesome. Plus, as I said, they're my favorite model. The Thunderwolf cavalry to me are the nicest model in the Space Wolves Codex. So I just love them. I want to paint them. 615 Death Dealer says, Hey Jay, I need a little help. I have a friend who plays Eldar and beats me every time. I play Imperial Guard and Necrons. He runs two Wraith Knights and an Avatar Kane. They just crush me. My Limonress squads. I play mainly on an Armored Guard list. Yeah. Any tips against Eldar for Guard? Um, essentially, you have... The thing is, Guard have the, the ability to cater against your opponent. So if you know what he's bringing... Cater against it. So he runs Wraith Knights. So you need... I don't know if you have any instant killing. Do I have my Astro Militarum Codex on me? Yes. I don't think any of your guns have instant death capabilities. But if you did, that'd be really nice. Let me think of myself. Yeah. Uh, Wraith Knights are hard to kill if you don't have any e instant killing abilities because they have a lot of wounds. Um, Hellstrike missiles would do the, mis do the, but they're only one use only. Sorry, I'm just looking at the combinations. Last Cannon Spam is a way to go. Last Cannon Spam will demolish, basically, Meltavets. They'll do really well against Wraith Knights if you can pop them out and then just Melta your opponent 
because Meltas will hit. If you can get some, uh, definitely bring some psychers and give them prescience. Bring some psychers, give prescience to your heavy hitting squads because you need them to hit. They'll wound pretty easily. But Meltas will wound on fours, at least. And last cannons, that's what essentially you need is some high hitting power to deal with Wraith Knights. It's all you can do because Bolt Fire will not do anything. Las Gun Fire will not do anything. You need high strength, solid AP shots. Um, that's the only way to deal with them pretty much. Because they'll, in close combat, rip apart pretty much anything. Um, that's what I'm saying. In Chimeras, you need vets. Or heavy weapons teams. Heavy weapons teams will also do very well um, against your against Wraith Knights. But that's it. You Essentially, you have the ability, if you know what your opponent's going to bring roughly, uh, Imperial Guard are one of the best armies out there for catering against an opponent because they have such variety in their lists, and you can spam whatever you really want. So, I Lehman Russ, as you said, it does eat through your Lehman Russ squads. But you gotta bring the right tank. And give them multi meltas. You gotta multi meltas, meltas, uh, plasmas. It's the only key to go through Wraith Knights. It really is. What else is it? An Avatar of Kane? The Avatar of Kane is kind of the other option. You kind of just shoot it to death repeatedly. But um, yeah, I don't think anything has instant death capabilities. It does bring it from the Astromilitarum. Codex, I don't remember anything having instant death capabilities, but if it did, I'd instantly recommend it. But uh, plat melt vets are essentially the way to go. you got to get them to your opponent and try to melt them. The only problem is they're very maneuverable. So then in that case, you just last cannon it to death. Mm -hmm. But it's hard. As I mentioned, Imperial Guard, against... This is one of those lists that a couple weeks ago... People were asking what armies to avoid against Imperial Guard, and this is this is one of those armies that uh, that if you spam Wraith Knights with the Avatar or Wraith anything Wraith against Imperial Guard will be an issue. But there are some some awesome Imperial Guard players, I believe, in the uh, watching this video. So leave a comment. What else you can add? But you got to bring high strength stuff. That's it, and spam it. It's the only unfortunate way to do it. The Warpsmith says, greetings from the Soul Forge, Jay. Greetings. Wanted to ask you if you would think that since Matt Ward is gone from GW, they will retcon most of his, well, retcons, yep, so that armies like the Ultramarines can become respectable again and will not be flawless demigods of perfection with no substance. Personally, think the Smurfs were always an ar army I wanted to love because ancient Rome is my favorite ancient civilization. And they really spoke to me until I became aware of what a particular heretic wrote in the novels and codices. Yeah, I do. I All right, here's the thing. When Matt Ward leaves, whenever a writer leaves, what they typically do is they try to replace the older books of that author quickly. Hence, uh, Grey Knights. Hence, um, Necrons are coming up soon. Dark El Eldar are coming up soon. They're going to try to replace Matt w Ward's stuff um, as fast as possible for the older material. That being said, for the armies like Space Marines... Uh, it'll take a while, but I really do have faith that they're going to start unmatwarding the stuff, and really, because the, the new approach is kind of by by is by uh, a committee, and I really do feel that I, I hopefully I, I have faith in the in the upcoming codices. I really do, you know. I I, I really hope that they do because I hope that this is a time of change. Um, it's for the future of the company. They need to have some change. And I think that's what they're going to do. Orcs Codex was okay. Uh, Space Wolf Codex was pretty... I, I think they're going to start moving to like middle of ground codices. Like Space Wolf has some solid options. It's a, it's a pretty good competitive army. Um, Grey Knights, a pretty good competitive army. Orcs have some pretty good competitive options. So I think I think that, that they're going to start, you know, not necessarily balancing perfectly, but I think they're going to start addressing some of these issues. I really do hope so. Orcs is the biggest, says, I'm going to say that the Catan gods are going to be the lords of war. That could be. That's a very good option, too, for the Necrons. Uh, I, do, I do wonder. I think it's going to be Emotech. I really do think it's going to be Emotech. And now, coming back to it, I have said Mephiston, but people have made some very good cases that it won't be Mephiston, that it will be, um, whatever his name is. Other guy. Yeah. Which it could be. 
You guys are right. You know what? Just are us guessing. The reason why I wouldn't say a Catan shard, Catans used to be HQs, but then they would move to elites. I just think I, they lately have been moving HQs to elite uh, to the Lords of War. So we'll see. Dante, that's it. I could, I definitely could see Dante because he's the company master. So uh, or the chapter master, company master. Yes, whatever he is. But Dante could definitely be moved to a Lord of War. You know. Mm -hmm. Necrons, I'm curious. I'm very curious. Could be a you know. It'd be nice to see, like, some monstrous creatures be moved to Lords of War, but, uh, I don't know, like, Tyranids, would that have made it the Swarm Lord? Mm -hmm. Benislav says, oh, sorry, Black Tom says, I think they might be the first book with multiple characters as Lords of War. Could be. That's a cool option. Because I agree with you. I also think Jay is correct that the Storm Lord will be, also be Lord of War. Yeah, that'd be really cool. That would be really cool. Benislav says, Jay! Thank you for the show. No problem. I would like to say sorry for not responding to your response to my comment from about a month ago. No problem. I was watching a while painting and forgot to leave a comment at the end. No problem. Anyway, my Astro Military Collection now looks like this. Company Command Squad with Fox. Whoa. Okay, here we go. With the Vox, Medic, the Launcher, Chimera. Uh, the Launcher is so far my only choice for Skyfire. Yeah, you have to bring it for Skyfire. But I will bet I will get rid of it once my army grows a bit. Yeah, once you get more Skyfire options. Lord Commissar or with Power Sword and Bolt Pistol. Good option. Vets with two Melters and a Flamer. Yeah, in a Chimera. Vets are still a solid option, in my opinion. Vets with two Plasmas. So you got the Melta Vets, you got the Plasma Vets. Two Lehman Rust Battle Tanks. One Lehman Rust Demolisher. Have access to Knight Commander Pask. Excellent. I'm mainly playing against Necrons and Ultramarines, though. And the only and the Necrons run me to the ground every time handily. Yeah, because the amount of just glancing. Uh, any advice on how I could expand my army on the combinations of tanks? And upgrades on units I already have could help me against the robots. Uh, against the robots. So, to me, against Necron, see, is they always they have a three or four plus armor save, so it's pretty easy to go through their armor. Like if you spammed a, a wyvern battery, wyvern batteries will eat squads for breakfast of Necron. You know, as long as you're not running, if he's running just normal Necron Warriors. If he's running uh, Immortals, it's a slightly different story. It's slightly harder. But Wyvern Batteries will eat Necrons to death. Uh, just spam them and shoot them at them, and it'll eat up the squads. You know, you just force them to take enough armor saves, and they will die. Um, I, I, I'd be curious as to what your Necron opponent is bringing. But um, that's, a, that's one key. Uh, psychic Powers are a key now. Because you can walk all over Necrons with Psychic Powers. You know, um, if you bring three... Uh, you bring three of the uh, Primaris Psychers, you know? Uh, you didn't mention you have a Command Squad, so I'll ignore the, the Command Squad guys. But uh, other things, just large quantities of firepower. Because they don't have... Like, they're, all their vehicles are... A relatively low, you know, low armor for a vehicle. They're all 11s or 10s. So, Meltas, bring tons of Meltas will help you. Bringing LAS cannons, some heavy teams with LAS cannons, will definitely pop some vehicles. Um, the key is to, to outgun them, because Necrons are very good from a mid to low range guns. Um, but, you could outgun them. That's the key. You just gotta outgun them from distance and blow them up and try to keep as many of your vehicles alive as possible. Uh, more vets. That's another solid option. You already have two squads of vets, you said. So I would add another squad of vets with Meltas. Two Lehman Rust battle tanks, all the weapons magnetized. So that's great. You have tons of choices. A third Lehman Rust would make it even better. What I find with the Imperial Guard is that the more you bring, the better it becomes. You know, a squad of three is way better than a squad of two, which is way better than a squad of one, because it just keeps the squad alive and and will... Uh, you get so much more firepower. You could add multi melters They're a little bit expensive for 20 points, but you could add uh, multi melters or plasma cannons to your Lehman Russes, because that would give some just some extra firing power against their vehicles and would eat their their squads for breakfast. Um, if they're bringing flyer spam... Then you have to choose which flyer you really want to go against their fly, you know, which anti-flyer you want for your heavy support. So yeah, just depend on on what your opponent is bringing. But you you do have some options. Uh, again, wyvern batteries alone will eat Necrons for breakfast if they're on foot. 
because you just force that many armor saves and they will fail and then they won't get back up, some of them won't get back up again. You just keep doing it, bombarding them and they will go away. Um, for vehicles, you gotta bring, because they are open topped and if you bring an AP2 weapon, it's gonna be pretty easy to pop them and that way it'll get them on foot and then that really will slow them down and then you just bombard them with your wyverns. So I really hope that adds. Uh, obviously, if you have anything to add, um, yeah, obviously more Skyfire would be awesome. That's what I was about to say. You gotta bring more Skyfire if he's running Flyer Spam for Necrons. You gotta bring tons of Anti-Flyer. But apart from that, I'm at a loss. Is Vendetta the single best way to go? Vendetta Spam is one of the best ways to go, yes. Uh, vendettas are really nasty. They answer Flyers very well, um, but they got more expensive. But they're still very, very good uh, in a competitive game. If your opponent is running tons of flyers, let his flyers come on first, and then you destroy those flyers with the vendettas. Because vendettas, with their three twin linked, um, with their three twin linked las cannons, will just eat anything to death. Bring a squad of three, they'll eat one thing per turn, guaranteed. So, yeah. Uh, I really hope that adds. Obviously, you don't have to bring them. They're not, they're a competitive option, but they're you don't you don't necessarily have to bring them. Out of the fast attack choices, they are the best. They are definitely the best in my opinion by far. For the points, got still 170 points, three twinling glass cannons, pretty nasty. You can bring three squad three individual squads of one, and then fly them on and pop three individual targets because vendettas against necrons will be very nasty. Three into three twinling glass cannons will pretty much hit th two or three each time. And you're against open-topped vehicles, and it'll eat them for breakfast. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then also, if you pen a vehicle, you remove that extra armor that they get, because once they're penned, they lose the extra armor, and then your normal guys can just eat them to death. So yeah, I hope that helps. Sebastian, the Gelstrom, says, Hi Jay, and greetings from Sweden. Greetings from Canada. I wonder what game you think has the most beautiful models, 40k or fantasy? Alright, as far as aesthetics go, fantasy. Because they, it's not just armor, you know, they have a lot of interesting character, and they have guys without armor and stuff. Like, they have the, the most beautiful armies, I would argue, foot fantasy, because of just the variability in models and, and the way they look. Um, cool factor, I'd say, 40k. I love some models in 40k. I just painted up a recent model for Trollbloods for, for hordes that, you know, Epic Borka just made my day because he's on a polar bear. Um, but I, I would say fantasy has more beautiful models. Definitely. Because most of the 40k models are space marines, and they're just armor. You know, there's only a couple models per codex that really blow me away. Like, I love the way the wolves are sculpted for the space wolves. Uh, for Grey Knights, there aren't that many models that really blow me away the way they look. So, yeah, fantasy, for sure. And the way these monster creatures, there's that new guy in fantasy. What is his name? Oh, uh, what is his name? That's going to bug me for a second. Let me look it up. That new model alone is amazing. Uh, Nagash? I believe it's, yeah, Nagash. He's amazing. That one model alone blows away most models in 40k easily. And he's just beautiful and it's huge and I would love to paint it up. So cool stuff, Nagash. The Silent King says, Jay, I want to bring up some Storm of Vengeance. I want to bring up Storm of Vengeance. It's unlike others. I find it a good, if not decent game. Yes, it is not like all the other 40k games. Yeah, I like it too, but not a lot of other people do. Uh, it's okay. But it isn't, but isn't it good games with workshop? Isn't it good games workshop is trying something new? Also, I will you compare it with the other lame games like oh the other lame games like Planet vs Plants vs Zombies. Anyway, thanks Jay. And to point out, you are a great knight and you and you play the game, so it's definitely not a game of heretics. Excellent. That's good, Jay Knight. And uh, get jaded. So thank you very much. Yeah, Storm Avenge, it's not a bad game. It's fun, it's a lame game. I know a lot of I understand why people don't like it. It's not the greatest game of all time, but I have fun. It keeps me occupied and I only paid like I didn't pay much for it on Steam, so I'm I'm really enjoying it. But I understand, you know, it's just it's a lame game. But I don't personally mind. I, I was a little bit surprised at how much people hated it. But I understand the points. Uh Dorn Dorn's Apothecary says, hey Jay, I'm part way through building a sizable Death Skulls army. That's awesome. I don't know if you're ever done building a Death Skulls army. But hit the wall and decided I needed a break from greenskins. As such, I bought a couple boxes of Space Marines. Command Squad and Stringer boxes. Great choice. 
as I like these skits. I'm going to build a thousand points list to be an ally to my friends, Space Wolves, painting them up as Crimson Fists, intending to use Imperial Fist chapter tactics. I also have two web exclusive captains, which came together came out earlier this year. That's awesome. How would you kit these out, these two units, and expand them into a legal thousand point list? Thanks in advance. Dorn's Apothecary. Uh, I would personally kit out your squads with as much like Meltas and uh, your command squad or Stern Guard. Mm. Stern Guard, yeah, you know what to fire them. Give them a, uh, definitely give your Stern Guard a drop pod for sure. Um, if you want to give your command squad like a bunch of like Thunderhammer Storm or like give them Storm Shields and guns or something like that, keep them alive, give them a good invol. Uh, and then you could attach like Lysander or whoever you want to make that a hilarious list. Uh, but he's a lot—he's very expensive in a thousand-point game, so I probably avoid him. The captains, I would go with—you've um, got to go with something heavy hitting in close combat with captains because, yeah, you just got to. So let me ch check this out. So captain, what does he have access to? Should have access to anything. Company master, the captain. Hmm. He's probably on Terminator armor. I would personally give him. I like Thunderhammers. For a. I think they have access to. They should have access to melee weapons. Yeah. Thunderhammer. Thunderhammer Storm Shield on a captain would be pretty nasty. I don't think you can give him a Storm Shield. Or maybe you can. <laughs> yep, maybe take a Storm Shield. Thunderhammer Storm Shield on a captain. Pretty scary. Especially with the new challenge. Well, like with challenges in general in 7th edition 40k. Uh, I would give him something like that. Because I know he's a good ballistic skill. But really, you either give him, give him a good weapon. So you can shoot it and hit on twos. Or you just give him a really nasty close combat weapon. Like Thunderhammer Storm Shield. Because his weapon's still a six. Then he'd be three up, three up. He got a, he's got a three up invol. And he'll be nasty. So that's the way I personally get out the captains. Depending on what role you want them, what, where you want them to be in your army. Other than that, you, of course, you need some normal marines. Uh, you, I, as I said, with Iron Hands, I would like, with Imperial Fists, I would take, you know, either Thunderhammer, Storm, Shield, Terminators, with Lysander, about a thousand points. I'd take two squads of ten tactical marines. Uh, again, you'd have to decide if you want them to close the gap quickly or not. Give them drop pods. And the, the best thing about Imperial Fists is a bolter fire. So you just got to give them as much bolter fire as possible. Uh, I definitely upgrade like give grav guns. If you want to put them in, uh, if you want to put them in drop pods, then grav guns become a great option because then you can close the gap and then fire at them with the grav weapons in the tactical marine squads. So, yeah, for a thousand point list, I'd say two tactical marine squads with grav weapons in drop pods. Uh, your captain, your stern guard, your command squad, and then put your captains with your command squad. Give them a drop pod possibly and drop them right at your opponent's face. Mm hmm. Quiet One says, Hi from Scotland. Hi, Quiet One. I actually backpacked Scotland a while ago. It was cool. A long time ago. Many years ago. I have the Orcs from the Stormclaw supplement and was wondering if I'm able to take Kruk Face Ripper as an HQ War boss out with the attachment for the 130 points as per the Data Slate stats, or is he tied to this attachment and would be classified as a normal War boss in the Codex? I think he'd be. I suppose the question is. Is it all or nothing from these attachments? Yes, I think it is all or nothing. I, I think if you bring him with the normal orcs, he becomes a just a normal war boss with a um, with a power claw and his gun. So I think it, it's kind of all or nothing with these attachments. I think it's uh, answering your question. I think that's what you're getting at. So you can't just take Face Ripper under the normal orcs codex because he doesn't exist in that codex. I think. I think do they do a supplement on it? Let me see. I love this Black Library FAQ, which I have because I've had to look at the FAQs a lot. Works. Yeah. Correct face robot. I think you can't, yeah. I don't think you can take them under the normal orc codex. Lou Byers says, hey Jay, thanks for the response. The Sanctic powers work out great and the Vortex was a blast. No pun intended. Yeah, I know, it is fun. I've tried it out a couple times. It is nasty. 
I've decided to expand my army and ally with Space Marines. So as of right now, I've gotten a Librarian along with some Space Marine snipers. What would you recommend that I use alongside the Grey Knights? Would Lysander be a good fit alongside the Grey Knights Paladins, maybe? Yeah, that would be an interesting combination. Lysander is really nasty in close combat. I love Lysander. Maybe that's why every question today has been coming back to Lysander. Um, but... Uh, Mm. Yeah, what else would you bring? I'd recommend things from long range. The best things that would complement Grey Knights, Grey Knights are very good from a short range. So if you could bring stuff like anything, uh, grav weapons would be hilarious. Uh, Centurions with grav weapons, again, nasty with, with Grey Knights because they will help pop everything before the Grey Knights get to them. You need to help things from longer range because Grey Knights are very good only from 24 inch range. So anything like plasma guns or anything with like las cannons, anything you bring that would help from a longer range to help supplement them so that, that way they can uh, get to where they need to go and do what they need to do and not be destroyed on the way. Yeah. A librarian's a great choice. Uh, some snipers. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily bring snipers, but that'd be an interesting choice. Uh, Lysander would be good. Uh, that's up to you. As I said, obviously you'd have to bring some tactical marines or whatever you want to bring as troops. Uh, tactical squads. You have two choices, give them some longer weapon, longer range weapons, or put them in a drop pod, drop them at your opponent, put them in a rhino. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'd say really, uh, one of the biggest things that would complement Grey Knights would be Centurions. Because they would eat a lot of the things for breakfast that, uh, especially the vehicles, because Grey Knights are going to have a problem against higher armored vehicles, but Centurions can fix that. And Grey Knights also have a problem with very high toughness monstrous creatures for shooting. Like a Wraith Knight, for example, uh, Grey Knights, it, it's only, you know, only a couple weapons can hurt a Wraith Knight. And then they have to get in close combat, so uh, Centurions would fix that and really complement them well. Mm -hmm. uh, Scarcast says, Woot, first question of the pack. What I meant by Nemesis List was is was indeed the bane of my existence, yes. Like rock, paper, scissors, some lists have a sort of hard counter that gives it a rough time. Yes, so that was what I addressed last week, the, the bane of my existence lists. But now I know. Thank you very much what a nemesis list is. Donus Lil says, what suggestion would you make to rebalance 40k so that the shooting armies are still good, but assault armies stand a chance to defeat them? Uh, a couple small tweaks. The biggest problem between 5th edition and 6th edition was they threw in several rules at the same time that favored shooting, i.e., Overwatch, i.e. removing models from the front. Those were the real big ones. And then obviously the change to rapid fire weapons and the popularity of rapid fire weapons made them insane. But um, so removing one of those, primarily, I think the biggest key would be removing models from the front. If you remove that rule and you can remove any model you want, including the ones from the back, that would give assault armies a huge advantage. Because then your orcs or tyrannids won't be just moving up and being mowed down, and then moving up and being mowed down, they'd actually move up, you'd mow down from the back, move up again, and then they're in your face, and you can't avoid them. You can't just keep shooting them down. So if that alone, that one change would probably rebalance significantly by just uh, removing the rule that you have to remove the closest. And also, then, you don't need to worry about who's closest, and it would be nice. So, yeah. Gabe Vapors says, Hi Jay, first off, I'm brand new to 40k. Well, welcome to 40k. And I love it so far. Excellent. I chose orcs because they're fluff and random fun factor, even though I do have a competitive side. I have a build of 60 boys, 6 knobs, and 3 cans. After experiencing that list in an open terrain versus Tau, I decided to add a truck and a battle wagon. What models do you suggest I get next to make a fun but still competitive list? Um, first thing jumps to my mind, especially against Tau, is... You need big mechs with custom force fields. They are really the key to keeping your guys alive. Other than that, you could go pain boys for HQs because it'll help keep your boys alive as well with feeling no pain. But Tau will ignore cover. But Tau cannot ignore invulnerable saves. So keeping your guys, you know, you put a uh, big mech with custom force field and bury them in a squad of boys uh, will help those boys get across the table, or, you, you know, it'll help keep your cans alive too, because then they have a 5 plus invulnerable save. And invulnerable saves will keep your guys alive. You don't care about a 6 of armor when you have a 5 up invul. So first thing, definitely a, um, 
a Big Mac with custom force field. Maybe two. Because you can bring three HQs. So you didn't mention what HQs you have. So I'd say two of them would be a really good complement to your list. Uh, second thing you might want to take, yeah, Battle Wagon. Because as long as you keep them facing forward, you keep your Big Mac in the Battle Wagon, it'll be very hard. Tau have a problem against extremely high armored vehicles. So as long as you don't let them get around to the sides, you're in great shape. Because it'll be hard for them to pop an armor 14 vehicle that has a 5 plus invulnerable save. Also, I picked up some Death Guard on the side as I want to start a Chaos Nurgle list. Cool. So you're having tons of fun. Uh, any suggestions on a good HQ choice for a Chaos Nurgle list? Yes. Um, what is his name? Oh my goodness. I am having so many brain farts today. My favorite HQ, if you want a themed Nurgle list, you go um, the guy with the scythe. Second here, do, 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 characters. I would take um, Typhus. Typhus is a solid HQ, especially if you want to take Plague Zombies. If you want a Nurgle list, Plague Zombies are hilarious. They're really good, and Typhus makes them just awesome because it makes them Plague Zombies. And Typhus himself is actually a really solid HQ's job. So for for a Nurgle HQ, I take Typhus, um, and then as I mentioned, for Orcs, you need you need cover. But cover can be negated by Tau. So go uh, invul. It's the only thing keeping orcs alive from shooting these days. Uh, not bikers, another viable choice. If you put a Big Mac in with a not bikers, it's a hilarious choice uh, against Tau. That might be an option too. You give not bikers a custom force field mech, and that way they get across the table very quickly, close that gap, and just wipe out your opponent very quickly with close combat nastiness. Um, Besides that, orcs will have orcs will inherently have a problem with Tau. So yeah, but I hope you. I'm glad you love 40k. Welcome to 40k. Tau are an exception to most of the 40k stuff, but yeah. But thank you very much. I'm glad you enjoy, it. and thank you very much for your comment. Holy moly! There are a lot of comments today. This is going to get into like an epic mode. Uh, Steve Jorvich says the new lights look great. Thank you very much. I got an airbrush set up and had a question about thinners. Does Liquitex or some other craft store brand make a good product for thinning paint? Or should I just stick with the products from brands like Vallejo? I've seen some forum posts suggesting Windex is a thinner. Actually, people, Windex? You can use Windex as a thinner. Most people use it as a cleaner. But that just seems silly to me anyway. But I don't know really what I'm doing. Thanks. Uh, I know some people recommend Windex. Usually people recommend Windex as a cleaner, not a thinner. Um, people sometimes, people just use alcohol. Alcohol to thin your paints. Uh, certain concentrations of alcohol, if you check it out, will match your paint types easily. Um, water, I recommend avoiding if you can. By the way, I just realized my th whole thing might have been blurry today. Let me change my focus. There we go. Um, today, my, you know, the... Uh, People can use Windex. Uh, I recommend alcohol if you don't have thinner. Um, I, I just personally use Vallejo thinner myself. I recommend it. You know, people can use Windex. I just, it, you can. You can try it out and see how it does for you. It will thin your paints because it, it's a good cleaner. Therefore, it'll probably be a good thinner. But I just recommend using the thinners. Like Vallejo, Badger. You know, you can trust them. You know that they're perfectly compatible. Mm -hmm. And it definitely need to be water, but I don't recommend water. Especially if you're doing metallic paints. Uh, Apathetic Fish says, Great improvement in lighting. What kit did you buy? I bought just a uh, green screen kit off eBay. Really helps with quality. Question Should I restart my Necron army? I know the answer is yes, but what do you think is cool about Necrons and what are your factor Necron units and not like? Uh, I'd probably. I'd, I'd wait answering this question because I think Necrons are going to get a new codex soon. So it actually might not be worth restarting your Necron army today. Uh, unless you really want to start it, but then if you go with obviously if you if you stick with you know uh, immortals and warriors, they're not going to change probably. They'll be just as good in the new codex. But I do see Necrons getting a new codex in the near future, and I do think the the flyers might change in costs appropriately, and uh, things might be moved around. So I'm probably not going to answer that comment now because I think it, I I don't know if you, it'd be a perfect time to start Necrons because Necrons and Dark Eldar are kind of on the chopping block to see who's next for a new codex. 
Edmund Rosa says I play Dark Elder in House and Aegis Defense Line. I used it primarily for access to the Quad Cannon or Icarus Lattice Cannon as a good counter against Flyers, but I have not been playing it with lately these days. If if I do not go first, I usually end up jinking my first transports on the first turn. Yeah, exactly. So, there we go, that comment. Masaka says, hey Jay, big fan of the new light setup, thank you very much. This is a very apples to oranges type question. But when taking the role of each and efficiently efficiency therein into consideration, would you consider Yark or Creed a better last slot filler? Oh. Which itself is a healthier, healthy balance of infantry and armor? That's a good question. I'm going to think about that one for a minute. That's a really good question. Because... Hmm. I like... I See, I'm personally a Yark person. But Creed with is just awesome too. But I like Yark. Um... If you have points to spare, I personally go Yarick. But Creed is just great. He's only 80 points. He's a great armor. He has Carapace armor. They both have Carapace armor, obviously. Um, and he also gets two Warlord traits. So he's a great points. Uh, points for points, I'd say Creed. But I personally, if I had the extra 65 points, I would take Yark. Yeah. Very good question. It makes me think. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jubble Idiot says about the ne Necron's Lord of War, Emotech would be the best choice both considering fluff and rules. Yeah, exactly. He tends to use just Overlords because they have lots of fun using Emotech in the combination of Xandrek and Oberon. Uh, but he has fun. Yep, exactly. Lords, you can cut out Lords to be amazing. Or Overlords, sorry. In this Codex, Overlords are just insane. The customizability, they have such hard-hitting close combat power. Give them Mind Shackle Scarabs, they eat through everything. Uh, Black Tom says, Jay, for your ad in the middle, can you time it so that it does not interrupt you? You know, say something like, and here's a Q&J commercial break. Wait a second or two, say, welcome back, and place an ad at the point between after and edit the video. Is that even possible? Yes, it is, actually. It probably is possible. Very good suggestion, Black Tom. Very good suggestion. Also, do you get credit if we skip the ads? Not usually. Or do you only get credit if we watch all of it? It depends on the length of the ad. Uh, certain, it all depends on the length. Certain lengths you can watch more, and we have paid. Certain lengths, if you don't watch, if you skip it, you don't get paid. So, but very good suggestion actually, Black Tom. I might do that from now on. And now a we'll commercial break, and then commercial break, and then back. That's actually a great idea. Very cool suggestion. It also adds a fun like TV quality. Very good suggestion, Black Tom. That's awesome. Uh, Lads Lab, so once again, thanks for answering my question, Jay. New lighting is cool, and sometimes the camera or maybe my eyes would focus on the hallway behind you. Yeah, that's true. And this does at least, you know, put me in perspective and the lights behind it. Uh, so nice. You need to go poke Dave, as well as we were talking about the new Space Wolf Codex the other day, and missed that you can take a lone wolf for free for troops choice and certain elites. Yes, that's true. Exactly. Two more questions for you now. I have Dark Eldar. My close combat army. Tau is my long range. Necrons survival medium range. Shooting and space wolves is for psychic armor. Yep. I'm thinking about a chaos demon army. Alt Zinch. Ooh, millions of psychers. Yeah. Or Alt Zinch, thousand suns, chaos space marines army. But there's not a lot of pe good tank popping in each. So that would. So what would you recommend? Hmm. Also looking to start war machine. Loads of people play cricks. Like 80% of the player base in our club. What's good versus them, as I pretty much like all the armies? Um, well, it depends on what kind of cricks your opponents are running. Uh, a lot of the answer they, depends on what they're spamming. Uh, and unfortunately, I'm not the most knowledgeable against cricks. But uh, Signar have some options with all their magic weapons that you can fire. Like Arcane Tempest Gun Mages for Signar will do well against cricks. Um, yeah. Or possibly electricity. To be honest, I don't know about that question. I'm going to think about both of them. Because I don't have a lot of experience with Zinch or uh, against against Cricks. I don't play against Cricks very often. But Signar have some options. Uh, and Retribution, sorry, not Retribution. Um, 
Menoth have a lot of options apparently against them because they a lot of them require magic weapons. But it depends on what specific are they running like Severus against you or what specific casters would make it a little bit easier. Dan Burns is hi Jay and thoughts based on recent codexes. What might be in store for the Necron decks? Necron decks, uh, obviously someone's being moved to Lord's War. That's going to be pretty pretty apparent. Um, I believe the Flyers are going to be more appropriately points costed. They're going to be upped in points. Uh, what else? They'll probably get one or two new fancy things. Uh, besides that, not a whole lot. I see them keeping you know a lot of the the, the center of the army the same. Uh, maybe one, maybe a point, one or two, maybe a point change for the warriors or immortals. Uh, maybe the immortals might get one point cheaper. The warriors might get one point cheaper. Uh, the flyers will be more expensive, and the HQs fast attacks will probably get cheaper. Other than the flyers, you know that's what they've typically been doing. Uh, they're going to add some cool new warlord, uh, sort of some artifacts, possibly to help them against psychers. Yeah, that's it. You know, maybe they'll get a new. Uh, Monster creature or something. That'd be kind of cool. They got incorporated that scorpion thing into their army. Nicola Warren says, Hey Jay, greetings from Great Britain. Hello, Nicola. Love your channel. Thank you very much. I had a quick read through the comments already here and didn't see anyone respond to what was suggested for the Grey Knights at around 2505 regarding troops. I apologize if I'm repeating something that has already been mentioned. No, you haven't so far. As far as I'm aware, if your opponent uses the force organization chart from the rule book and therefore his troops have objectives secured, your troop choices can only deny your opponent's troops on an objective if you also use the combined arms attachment from the rulebook. I don't believe so. I could be wrong, but I think it's it's your their their um, I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, people, but I think it's their any troops that their troops or any objectives that their troops are scoring can only be contested by your troops. Period. Yeah, I think you can deny regardless, as long as they're troops. And, wow, that's a lot. St. Paris, awesome comment. Sorry, I can't read all of this at the moment. Uh, P.S. I disagree with your choice of Pathfinders. Is an auto included for Tau. I prefer a commander with a drone controller in a squad with marker drones. Marker lights hitting on a 2+, plus and a jetpack infantry for extra mobility and relents. Awesome suggestion. And by the way, great comment. I did read through this entire comment, Nicola. And I'm not trying to just skip it. Obviously, I just we're already an hour and ten minutes into the video, and uh, you have an, you left an amazing comment. And uh, definitely, people go check out Nicola Warren comment. It's about uh, near the top, or uh, it depends on how you're filtering. But it's a, an awesome suggestion about Grey Knights, and uh, and I do actually really like the ideas you were asking me. Wanted, you wanted to ask me what do I think about the five man purifier squad and Razorback? I really do like the idea, uh, especially if you have a brother or champion, and how would you equip them? Uh, I still like. I really still like um, you have to either, either go silencers or psi or psi cannons. I still like psi cannons. I really do like psi cannons. At least a hammer. Um, if you're doing a squad of five, you need something for hitting power. So at least one hammer and two psi cannons. Percy Hudson says, "I just got into Warhammer 40k a couple of months ago, and I really enjoyed watching all your battle ports at the time. But I haven't seen a new one in quite a while." Yeah, I know. When can we expect more crazy orc action? Uh, next week. This week coming up, there will be one. Uh, it's going to be a J versus J battle report, I'm pretty sure, because I filmed a couple the other day just to, to, to in case I can't get opponents. But uh, it's going to be Orcs versus the new Grey Knights, and it's pretty cool. So it'll definitely be out soon. Or did I do Gospel Thraco? I don't remember which one. It's going to be free, which one's going to be War. One's Orcs, one's Gospel Thraco. The other armies really just can't win. Well, can we expect more Winnie William J battle reports? Definitely. I'm going to try to do them regularly. That's my goal. I just It has been a couple weeks. Last one I believe I put out was Scary, um, a few weeks ago, I think three weeks ago, and uh, it's gonna. I'm gonna try to get one a, out a week until I can decrease my hours in my other job enough where I can do two a week. The key is getting battle report opponents. So if you're definitely in the area, contact me because I'd love to play against you. Otherwise, I, I hope people like the J vs J battle reports. I filmed one for the Warp, and they kind of liked it. So I'm hoping that if I film it for free, the free content, we'll uh, see how they like it. So expect one soon. Probably next Tuesday is my guess. Crusades Gaming says, Hello Jay, first off, you're an awesome player. Thank you very much. I started uh, two months ago, the Blood Angels, and for HQ I have a fist on, and in the codex it says he hasn't an invulnerable save. He doesn't. You know something about this? Yeah, he doesn't have an invul save. It's really weird. He seems like he should have an invul save, but he doesn't. He tends to die really quickly to plasma fire. 
And for Crimson Fists, what do you recommend, the Dreadnought or Stern Guard? I personally prefer for Crimson Fists Stern Guard, but uh, Dreadnought can be nasty too, depending on what you want to equip it with. You want to give it some close combat weapons, drop in your front, uh, in a drop pod at your opponent, or Stern Guard. I def either recommend, I'd probably either one I'd recommend the drop pod. I've talked about a lot of drop pods today. And for, for Space Wolves Elite Choices, what you recommend? Elite Choices for Space Wolves, I really like their Dreadnoughts. Their Dreadnoughts are solid choices. Um, for, what else? We talked about Scouts and how they can be handy. Arjack Rockfist is awesome. Uh, Lone Wolves are great, but they don't take up a Force or an Organization chart. And uh, I really like, as I said, I just like the Dreadnoughts and um, that Murder... What's it called? The Murder Fang? He's pretty nasty. Not the nicest looking model, but uh, the Murder Fang, or even just a Dreadnought kitted out in a drop pod, would be really nasty for uh, your opponent. So, mm -hmm. Excellent. So thank you very much for your comments, Crusades Gaming, and I'll continue on. So an angry Mudkip says, the new Space Wolves Codex also has an error on the, the new Frost Cannon weapon thing, apparently. Different in main section to the refs. I ever heard that my local. Oh, cool. So I didn't even notice that. Apparently there have been errors in multiple codexes lately. So they'll probably fix it and uh, FAQ which one. Uh, Nurgle's Grin says, thanks for answering my questions, Jay. It helped and I decided to increase my Grey Knights army. So now I have some versatility now. 55 Grey Knights, 15 Terminators, 2 Venerable Dreads. One is auto cannons and the other is Laz. 2 Nemesis Dread Knights. Oh, 2 Razorbacks, 2 Rantlanders, Storm Raven, Librarian. Brother Captain Lord Keller Griggle. This should be some flexibility. Definitely Nurgle Screen. Definitely. Next same comment. Angry Mudkip. Uh, Blood Angels Lords of War will be Dante. Surely because he's the company master. Just my opinion. Yeah, as I said. You know, uh, definitely, I could definitely see... Uh, it could, could be the Swang Sanguinar, as Nicola Warren said. It could be the Sanguinar. could be Mephiston. could be Dante. We'll have to see. I understand a reason for each one. Mm -hmm. Sub... Three Zoro? I think it's like Sub Zero. I'm going to say Sub Zero. Hey Jay, I use YouTube on my phone 90% of the time and the other 2% of the time on my iPad. I was wondering if there's a way for you to PM me instructions on how to sign up for the warp and the instructions co and the subscription costs. Definitely. I'll definitely love the all your Deathwing are painted. Thank you, Rich. Also, are you how to, to paint Deathwing Belial vids still up? Yeah. No, uh... I did a Belial, a Belial vid, I never did a Deathwing vid, because I did the Deathwing video for Mini Wargaming, and as just an agreement, I didn't put up a Deathwing video on my own channel, because it was too close to the content for Mini Wargaming. So I did a Belial, and the Belial one is still up. Mm -hmm. And you definitely see, and you just apply Belial to Deathwing pretty easily. Uh, Dave Particular says, Jay, in regards to ads, how does it all work? Do you get a different amount of revenue for different length ads? Yes. Mm -hmm. Longer ones usually make more. Some ads allow you to skip after five or six seconds. Do you get revenue if we skip? No. Not usually. But it's okay. You want to skip it as I said. Feel free. Nope. It's, it's not. I'm not mad at all. Do you get more revenue if we let the skippable ad play all, all the way through? Depends on the length of the video. Some of them you get more. You get paid after a certain length of time. How much revenue do you get per ad? Can't mention that, unfortunately. Uh, is it based on some minuscule number times the number of views you make a less minuscule number? Yes, essentially. I think there is a misconception as to how much money one actually makes on ads. Could you clear it up? I can't. Uh, everyone I know who's mentioned how much they make per thousand views has gotten in trouble for it. Yeah, but it's not a lot, but uh, it's okay. We can't, uh, unfortunately, I can't mention it. It's one of the rules, and you just can't break it. Um, and Iteration 1 says, Iteration 0, sorry, he says, I've been wondering if the channel owner gets revenue changes based on the user skipping the ads also versus letting it play. Yes. If you if you skip the ad, the person typically doesn't get revenue for that ad skipped. Mm -hmm. Oh, this answer is one. Yes, and I did. So typically with ads, let's just talk quickly. So typically with ads, um, it depends on the length. Certain ones you can't skip. Those ones typically you get less money for. But uh, it's it, you really no one really sees how much you make per little ad or big ad. We just know that the approximate amount is different. Uh, and then the ones you can skip, if you watch a certain length of time before skipping, it counts as being watched. Versus skipping, which just 
doesn't count as being watched. Mm -hmm. And then the amount we make, uh, can't really comment. But, uh, yeah, I can't really say, unfortunately. I don't want to get in trouble. And I do know a couple other YouTubers that have mentioned it in the past and got in trouble. I know, uh, here's, a, here's a reference, people. Um, if you watch By Painted, he put out a video specifically showing his ad revenue. He takes you behind the scenes on his YouTube channel and shows it. And I'll, I'll reference you to, uh, to that video. Just look it up and how much he makes. And it's the one where he talks about his, his, his pay channel and, uh, and why he does it. And, and then he actually goes and shows you how much revenue per video. And you can kind of figure out approximately how much you make per, th per thousand views. Mm -hmm. Alastor 461 says, Hi Jay, I love the Q&Js, thank you. They are very informative and a great to get to know about you. Thank you, a couple questions. How long do you think the 7th edition rules will last? Hopefully more than two years. At least two years. Hopefully more than two years. Yeah. They're very, um, I got started in 40k and 6th edition, and it only lasted two years. And then the new robo comes along. I know. I unfortunately don't have the money right now to invest in the new robo, but I'm trying. It also depends on how long this one will last. I'm guessing at least two years. Hopefully it's a four-year cycle, but I'm guessing they might stick to these two-year cycles. They had some, several problems with 6th edition, so they decided to fix it. So I'm hoping four years. I'm really hoping four. How long do you think it will last? Yeah. Second question. I'm attending a corn theme by me. The biggest trouble I have is shooting. Am I, I'm bringing two four trains. That's why I recommended four trains. But they are pretty fragile along with Heldrake. Any suggestions? Yeah, corn theme lists are kind of weaker right now because they're more close combat oriented and close combat is not where it's at in 7th edition. Um... Unfortunately, it's it. I recommend three Heldrakes, or three, three Forge Fiends, max out your Forge Fiends, use them as supporting fire. Uh, obliterators. I know that they're not the most corn themed, but Obliterators will help with some long range firepower and give you some versatility in your list to pop whatever needs to be popped before coming in. And obviously, Heldrakes are still you know pretty viable option. They did get slight nerfed in 7th edition with the whole new jinking system. Because they now jink and then they can't, you know, do their flaming template. But um, obliterators to me would add some really needed firepower to your list. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesper Larson. Oh, okay, we're almost done here because it's getting pretty long. Jesper Larson says, "Hi Jay, I have played Imperial Guard for some time now. I've always played with ten by ten men squads with heavy bolters and plasmas, two platoon command squads with las cannon, one command squad, one basilisk, one Lehman Rust battle tank. After the flyers, I have taken some of some of them too." I've never seen anybody else played that list. I think that because of the cost or just because it is a really bad list. No, it's because your list seems to be more like a general list. And I find most Imperial Guard competitive players are very specific. Like they're each section fills a specific role. And I do find that you only take like one Basilisk, one Lehman Rust tank. Most competitive lists would be three Basilisks or three Lehman Rust tanks to maximize their efficiency at killing whatever your opponent is bringing. And that's the thing about Imperial Guard, as I mentioned, that they're perfect at calibrating your list against what you think is going to be coming. But they can be kind of difficult when you bring a general list to like a tournament. Ben Schmidt says, hey Jay, been a fan of your content ever since I started the hobby. Thank you very much. That's greatly appreciated. Just over a year now. Uh, it's always good to see people that are positive and passionate about the hobby. If you were ever planning a trip to the other side of Canada, Alberta, let me know. I would gladly go to Alberta. Of course, you guys just got tons of snow or snow warning the other day. It's like minus three in Alberta right now, and it's like 15 here in Celsius. It's pretty crazy. Uh, it would be awesome to get some games against you. Another thing I just thought I'd point out is that your Assassin Data Slate review, you dismissed the formation because you said they all could... I know, I'm sorry. They don't have to all be in the same unit. You are correct. That's not the case. The only time that comes into effect is when the formation places that restriction on you. You are 100% correct, and I really should have addressed that in the comments, Ben. You are 100% right. You can bring the formation, just one of each. You don't actually have to keep them in a unit. I just tend to think of all my orc formations, that they always have to be a unit. But you are correct. And thank you very much for your comment, and I would like to get down there sometime. Maybe I'll go see Dan sometime. I think he's in Alberta. The Spawn 117 says, Hey Jay, I need some help to get back my, on my Forge World account. Press reset password, and when I was almost done resetting my password, it gave me this question: "Who's the best Space Marine chapter?" And it tried, and I tried the list: Space Marine chapters from Black Templars, Salamanders, Grey Knights, and it's always saying incorrect answer. And it's making me furious. I need your help, please. To me, my favorite Space Marine chapter is probably the Imperial Fists, based on their their. My favorite Space Marine chapter is the Imperial Fists, um, based on their fluff. 
based on what they stand for, based on their rules, and I am a huge fan of Lysander. So I'd say Imperial Fists. Did you say Imperial Fists? You didn't say Imperial Fists yet. So maybe it's Imperial Fists, because I like them. They're cool guys. As far as new color scheme, I really like the Storm Wardens. I don't remember seeing them in my codex. Are Storm Wardens in here? Somebody sent me a picture of Storm Wardens the other day, and I was like, oh, cool color space Marine chapter. Metallic and a nice blue. So, cool. Yeah, that's it. So, that is it. It's an hour and 25 minute video. This is insane. This probably won't be up till tomorrow because it's going to take the rest of the day to render. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for leaving your comments in the comment section down below. Feel free to leave more comments. I really hope I addressed all your questions. I think I addressed all of them. That was a long amount of comments, but it doesn't matter. I that's the point of this is uh, is to answer your questions. And I'm glad I'm feeling a little bit better because, as I said, I, was just, I put it out late because I was a little sick. But um, as you can see in my voice, I don't, probably don't sound too amazing. But uh, thank you so much for watching this episode of Q&J. Leave more comments in the comment section down below and I'll do my best to keep answering them. And that's, that's the point of q and I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you have anything to add to any qu comments I'm, I answered, leave them in the comments in the comment section down below. That's what we're about. Community answering questions, helping each other. Awesome sauce. So thank you so much. Till next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting. And I'll keep Jaying. Yes.